wanted to redo my cast on video for working um, with the Neko curved double pointed knitting needles. These are made in Germany and they are fantastic and you only use three needles instead of four to five like within re with regular double pointed knitting needles. So two of the needles hold your stitches and the third one works them. So I'm just going to use some scrap yarn here and um, I'm going to show you how I cast on. Some people put all of their stitches on one needle and then um, take half of them and put them on the other needle but I prefer to just do them on two right off the bat. Um, it's just less fiddly. Um, I'm using long tail cast on and I've already cast on um, 25 of my stitches. I need 30 uh, on each needle so a total of 60 cast on. It's just a simple little boot cuff so there's not a whole lot of stitches on these needles. Um, so let me do five. Just a long tail. Okay, so I've got 30 on one. Now, here's how I do it. I hold them side by side with the one in back sticking out a little bit. And then I just continue casting on to get my 30 stitches. So you want to tighten up that first one a little bit. And I'm just going to hold them both. See, they're going on the back one. And that's 10. I think that's 20. Now, I've never used regular DPNs, didn't ever want to because it just seemed too daunting and fiddly to me. So I put it off and then my daughter became pregnant with my first grandbaby and I knew I needed to make hats for the new human, so I had no choice. So I went searching for tutorials that I could find. I've only been knitting about three or four years so I had to find tutorials on how to use DPNs and it just was like overwhelming. I couldn't believe it and then I ran across these. So I bought a pair and I couldn't believe how easy they were. If I can do them anybody can do it. Now if you're a seasoned knitter and you've been using DPNs for a long time it might be a little bit of a challenge to switch to something but it's only because it's new not because it's difficult. If it was difficult I wouldn't be able to do it trust me. But the new human needs hats and mitts so it had to happen. Let's see what I've got here I think I've lost count. Three more. Okay, so I've got my 30 stitches. Now, of course, like any time you're joining in the round, you don't want to, you want to make sure that you don't twist your stitches. So it's no different. So I just scoot my stitches to the other end 
making sure that the stitches are running on the inside just like you normally do. Make sure it gets over there. Okay, and then you check to make sure everything is along the inside. All your stitches are along in here, especially that corner there. Watch out for that. Scooch that up a little bit more. Now, get your third needle. Now here's where you could put your stitch marker on if you wanted to. I just put it on the on the tip of um, my working needle, which I don't know what happened to it. It's just a little tiny rubber band, but for this I'm not going to do that. Little tiny rubber bands that you get for the dogs, little tiny doggies or babies. Watch those stitches. There's lots of tricks to making sure that that gap stays closed, but for this I'm not going to show you my trick, which isn't mine. It's actually, I found it on New Stitch A Day. It has a great trick on there. But you just start knitting. This boot cuff actually has a, a rib on it, but I'm not going to do that. Just tighten up those first stitches. Now, a lot of times, you know, when I'm knitting along, especially when I'm doing this first row, which is always to me, I don't know why, it's always kind of funky. Maybe because I cast on too tight, I don't know. It always loosens up and it gets easier as I get to the second row. And that's true no matter if I'm using these or regular circulars. Just kind of hold on to that other loose one that I'm not working. It Just because it's there, really. Not because I have to. And I always watch where my stitches are right there. But if you've moved everything around, it really doesn't matter. We just keep knitting and moving. Now, if this was obviously a hat, I would have more stitches and it would go all the way around the curve of the needle. I still like it better than a straight stick though. I, I tried DPNs just barely and said, um, no. Not happening. So you just keep going around. Now, Somebody's been asking me about the difference between the extra long ones and the regular sock uh, curved DPNs. So the only difference is they're longer. And if you're doing a hat and you have more stitches, it can accommodate those stitches. Um, I'm doing a hat right now that had 96 stitches that I was casting on. So I tried it on um, the shorties first, the sock sized and it fit just fine so there was no reason to do an extra long but if you have more stitches for your project then the extra longs are available in a few of the sizes I think a 2.5, a 4, a 6, and an 8 I believe you'll have to check my Etsy but I believe that's true now these have really large ones too that are available size 17s. I've made big chunky hats. Um, with these and never had to switch needles which is nice. You just did the whole thing with just the DPNs, the curved ones. It was very nice. I suppose one of these days I should probably do a podcast so I can answer questions as they come in. I know a lot of you have emailed me and sent me messages on Etsy asking questions and um, I'm getting to them as quickly as I can. There's also a little hole that's in 
the ones that are for the sizes that are available for who, uh, hats and loops have a hole in part of the needle so you can finish off your hat instead of using a darning needle you can draw your ear ends through to close up your hat just using the um, the curved DPN I just have never I've never used it I suppose I will try one day and let you know how it goes in the meantime we're getting around to finishing our first round on here so you can see how smooth these are um, and this is synthetic yarn that I'm using which tends to kind of be sticky a little bit I make it a point not I try not to cast on too tightly which makes that first row kind of tough and that's true with any knitting needle I think except for metal maybe these are smooth working with no matter what yarn you're using although really smooth with good yarn I can tell you that but that's also true of any needle I believe so I think we're on our last stitch here we've completed our round because we're back to the tail when it's a small circumference item like this I don't scrunch up my stitches and move them probably as often as I should or could let's see you can start to see a little bit of something here and that's how you cast on with the curved double pointed knitting needles here I have a hat this is the hat I was talking about that I've started I'm on the rib right now and um, it's fine on the smaller ones because my yarn is like a Aran or it's a worsted maybe it's a worsted so let's see what was I on here okay I'm on a knit probably hard to see to see this with the background but and as you see as I get going I'm kind of holding the other needle but it's only because it's there this needle right here that I'm not working it's just already there so it'll get out of the way and then it just drops eventually but I mean I wish you could feel how smooth this is with a good yarn especially just as really nice to work with they sit nicely in your hands um, I've heard people say that holding the straight needles is so much harder that if you use both I'm trying to keep track of so many um, don't know I just think it would be really complicated and I'm so glad that somebody Oh, what was I on? Uh, somebody invented these. The lady there in Germany, smart lady. They just are very smooth to work with. The plastic glides. I know a lot of people don't like the plastic. Maybe someday they'll make them in wood. I don't know. they're awfully smooth now so it's just very nice to work with and quick so if anybody has any questions about how to cast on if you need me to go slower or do it with um, bigger yarn and bigger needles maybe I know before I did it with really chunky needles and I can do that again if it's easier to see or if you can't hear me any of those problems please let me know and I'll redo it again I don't have that good of um, high quality webcam but 
I'll do the best that I can. You're also welcome to email me with any questions. And, you know, go take a look at my Etsy store and try these out because they are really, just really nice to work with. You can also go to my blog that I've just started recently and we'll see how much time I have <laughs> to actually do posts on that blog but you can buy directly on my blog I believe I'm if everything's working correctly and it's secure um, there's links to my Etsy shop on my blog it's sheer sheer mutiny um, dot blogspot dot com uh oh did I mess up oh no uh, Nits and Nax is also on Facebook and it's N-A-K-S because N-A-C-K-S was taken. So come join me. Come visit me. Come ask questions. I'm on Ravelry also. And I will try to get to your questions as quickly as I can. And happy knitting. <laughs>